But can you explain to us what Helix is all about with the contagion, the bird flu influence? Go through the entire thing if you want. Well, uh, Helix is about, um, there's a secret research facility in the Arctic Circle that's been there for a long time that's, un that's been operated under very shady conditions. The CDC, the Center for D Disease Control in Atlanta, gets a call saying there's been an outbreak of something up there and we need some people to go up. So a small team is sent up into the Arctic Circle to go into this base and sort of figure out what's going on. And once they're there, they realize that they weren't even told the, the whole story. There's a much bigger deal happening here that's far more dangerous than what they realized at the outset. And not only that, the further in they get, they see that the research that was being done here had the potential to be one of the biggest scientific breakthroughs of our time, like an enormous thing that would really change all of our lives in a literal way. However, if it goes wrong, it could also wipe us out as a civilization. So it's, it's really big stakes. And the show is structured such that each episode of the first 13 is one day. So you're really looking at two weeks that happen at this little base and the you know the diseases around them and there's quarantines and who's got it and who doesn't and what's it doing to people and what's the secret at the heart of it and the pressure just keeps building and building and building and building and building. I gotta ask as a writer as well like I always respect where stories come from. Where did this story come from? This story did not come from me. This story came from a man named uh, Cameron Potosy, and whose name I always mangled. I'm sure I just mangled it incorrectly when you speak again. About it, there's such a passion in your voice for it. I loved it, you know, because the truth is, I don't like this kind of material. I'm not a medical guy. I don't like disease shows. I didn't like Contagion. Sorry. You know, it's like, I, this is not my thing. thing. Yeah. So I didn't even want to read it when they sent it to me. And they kind of said, no, trust me, trust me, read it. And I opened up the script, and it was just a page turn. It pulled me in. I was really interested in the characters. And by the end of it, I thought, there's a great show in here. So then I worked with him and uh, the other producers to sort of flesh out, well, what would the show be? And I just I started to realize it was an opportunity to do something interesting and unique, which is really what, what I'm all about. Yeah, kind of real, because I mean, that's definitely, I was like, oh, CDC, something breaks out. It's something we're all afraid of. Yeah. What are your thoughts on how the Battlestar Galactica game continues to succeed today as an online video game? Oh, well, I think it's a tribute to the, the strength of the show and the characters and, you know, the fact that the fans love the show so much that they wanted to keep exploring the universe and to keep sort of, you know, exploring different aspects of, uh, you know, the universe that we created. I think it's really fun and I'm really happy to see that there's people out there still flying around in Vipers and shooting Cylons. Do you think that the show coming first and then the game, what, what do you think is more important as far as a lasting effect goes? Uh, that's hard to say. You know, it's uh, I, I'm sort of trying to think of one that went the other direction, where you had the game first and then launched into the TV show. Which would be this, almost. Which would be this. Well, this is sort of simultaneously, so even this is a little bit different. I, I, they are such different experiences, you know, for the player and for the audience, that sometimes it's hard to find something that can sort of serve both masters. So when you do find a... a a piece that can uh, allow an audience to enjoy it in both those ways, then I think you found something really special. Okay, well, let me see. What else I got here? Um, all right, so basically, what opportunities, since Defiance is being developed as an MMO in Hollywood, what kind of opportunities do you see that opening for games across the rest of the future, basically? I mean, this is something that really breaks every single boundary that has been set. Well, if this works, you know, and, and it looks like it's going to, you know, there will certainly be other people who want to jump in and do the same thing. And you're starting to see a broader and broader acceptance of gaming as a legitimate, not just a legitimate activity, but a legitimate art form in and of itself. And the more that seeps out into popular consciousness, the more you're going to find that there's an even larger general audience that hasn't even put a toe into this world yet. You know, the gaming audience is still a small fraction of sort of the large audience, the potential audience that's out there. So if something like this can succeed and get conversations going where people see that there's a really interesting experience over here and they want to sample that, I think it'll just start to snowball and more and more people want to get into gaming and, and vice versa. I think what I love about these kinds of games is they really let you use your mind. It's not like you're just going along a journey and you have right. an end goal. It's like you really are able to differentiate yourself as a gamer. And basically, um, I know they were trying to do it with Star Wars, but I know Defiance seems to be breaking ahead a lot more so than, I know Star Wars kind of hit a little bump in the road, I guess, because they were trying to do the thing where the game develops on its own. Um, could you see anything else doing the same thing that Defiance does, like any other shows? I don't know, because uh, you know, you're, you're talking about a particular kind of story that, that lends itself to that kind of experience. I don't know that you really want to go and play the Mad Men game. You know, as much as you love Mad Men, do you really want to just go around New York City 
and look at other advertising agencies and sort of you know have character relationship stories told out as a gaming experience? Probably not. You know, it feels like the gaming experience demands a certain kind of excitement, a certain kind of puzzle, a certain sort of uh, experience that you want to go in and do yourself. And not all pieces of popular entertainment, not all stories will support you know that sort of additional um, time commitment. To. So I think it is kind of a case by case basis. You got to find a universe that is so amazing that you, the viewer, can't wait to explore what's outside the frame of your television set. Like well, you it's really like Middle want to Earth. Do that. Middle like Earth, Earth never really went to the video game level. It's not like we see the Hobbit MMO or you know right. seeing like a, sh a first shooter game from like being Legolas. So like, do you think there's like really a type of character that works in that kind? Because I mean, zombies seem to be zombies one of the are just things. zombies are just hot at the moment. But you know, Middle Earth. I, I, I don't know why Middle Earth isn't a gigantic. That's what I'm kind of thinking. I don't too. get it. I mean, because I don't, that there's is so many possibilities. Oh, there really it's so is. perfect. Especially so when you look in the video games and you see Radagast oh, and you see yeah. the different wizards and you could have those. And Absolutely. It's, I mean, it seems to be the perfect like equation. But why? I, I mean, I really don't know don't either. Know. It's a mystery to me too. So maybe you get on that. Oh, I'm sure. I'll just call him up. <laughs>